Hello and welcome to my major project titled Time to Shift. Time to Shift is a 2D platformer where you must switch between two worlds uh, to complete each level. Uh, in each world the playable character will have a different ability in order to complete that puzzle or level. Uh, in my game I have made one of the characters jump higher and one of them shorter to fit through smaller gaps uh, as you will see in a moment. Um, each world is mostly the same, uh, but there's small differences, um, which means the player must swap between them uh, in order to progress through each level. Uh, the main objective is to get to the next level, there's no collectibles, um, there's no enemies to fight. Um, I wanted to have... I didn't want to have any fighting or shooting uh, against the enemies, uh, just because I like the concept of having uh, no enemies. Uh, I took inspiration from Inside, uh, the game Inside. Um, all the basic features remain the same, um, but I've had to cut some of my expectations down. I was going to have more than two levels, uh, however this just uh, didn't work uh, with the time frame I had. So yeah, I have a menu system and I wanted to make it um, sort of follow the visual style of the overall game um, so um, I decided to make an options page um, just so the player can see the um, the values and the uh, options are uh, the controls um, and as you can uh, hear in the background the music uh, does differ from the menu page to the options page um, which I had uh, another student from the music department make for me. Um, credits will be in the description. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll get right into the game. Um, I decided to make a little animation sort of loading screen uh, just, to <laughs> just to jazz up the uh, front page a little bit. So yeah, uh, here's the game. Um, this is a tutorial level that I decided to create for the player. Um, I have uh, a complete sound system, um, <coughs> as you can hear, where the player can jump and uh, makes a so uh, sound. Um, these are checkpoints which the player will respawn at if they fall into. However, they will only have three lives before they reset the entire level again. And um, as you can hear from the music, it does pick up after every fail of a level you have. Uh, which I really uh, appreciate um, my teammate uh, making. So this one doesn't have an, this level doesn't have any world switching. Just so, just because I wanted the player to get to know their controls before I started to started to introduce the main mechanic. Um, as you see, uh, W to climb. Um, as ladders will be a very key uh, part to my game. Um, and as you can hear there's a victory sound and a uh, menu system where you can go to next level, main menu or quit, uh, but for the sake of this uh, walkthrough I'll just go to next level. Um, and this is where the alternate universe starts to get introduced. Um, so it says press to shift to switch dimensions. So. Um, you switch and there is a tree, uh, a fallen tree in the way, oh sorry, that will help you get up, whereas there isn't in the normal universe. So um, yeah. Uh, one downside to this character is that um, a lot of the corruption is quite toxic, um, as they will find out if they hit that they will lose a life and they'll, out of curiosity, they'll switch to the other world and Oh look, uh, the vines have gone, and there is a little little reminder to look out for toxic vines after the fact you've already touched them. Um, but a lot of a lot of the intro levels are a lot of trial and error, um, just because um, I, um, I didn't want to over-explain everything with a bunch of text on the screen, just sort of little hints here and there. Um, uh, this puzzle, uh, the player like. Uh, can't jump anywhere, so curiosi curiosity will get the better of them and they'll switch to the other world. So the only way they can go here is up the ladder. Um, and then they can't obviously go that way because there's nothing there. 
so they'll sort of look around, uh, switch a couple of times maybe, um, and then we'll find out they can jump up there, uh, and that is the first level where the level the player can switch between the worlds. Um, on onto the next level. Um, this is where it starts to get a little bit more player dependent, and they sort of figure stuff out to themselves um, rather than it explaining. Um, so for this level, I decided to start the start to like challenge the user. Um, as you can see, there's a platform here. Um, however, once you switch now, uh, there's no platform underneath them. So hopefully, they will. Um, sort of know to jump and switch at the same time, um, like so, um, and then that way they'll land on the platform, and then again just to sort of get muscle memory kicking in. Um, with this one, uh, I just wanted to have a few points where the player would have to switch, um, just so they would um, come to the uh, this puzzle in the right character, um, and as you can see, the, they will climb the ladder and they won't be able to get up on top of the ledge, so they'll have to switch, in which case they'll climb this ladder, and then they'll, like, they can't reach that, so then they'll have to switch back, uh, trial and error again, switch to this ladder, and then switch back. So it does involve a lot of switching, but uh, that is uh, the main mechanic of my game, so I just wanted to reinforce that really early on to get the player used to switching. And uh, the next level. Uh, this is where it starts to get a little bit more uh, challenging. Um, but I didn't want to make it too, too challenging to the point where the user would maybe get a little bit frustrated and not want to play. So... Uh, that was um, a mistake, <laughs> but um, the vines uh, obviously prevent you from going that way, so they'll have to switch this to this character. Um, and again, they'll have to switch because they can't. Sorry, they can't jump that high with this character, so they'll be forced to switch to this character. Um, however, they won't be able to go on that ledge as there is more vines blocking their path, so. But uh, what I would like the users to do is to jump, shift, and then control the character onto the ledge. Um, when when they come up to this level, uh, they'll sort of reach an end and they can't see any more platforms, so hopefully Curiosity will get the better of them and they'll switch. Um, and then they can cross the bridge uh, nice and easy. Um, with this one, um, there isn't a way to go across, so um, hopefully the user will be inclined to go down as there is a ladder, um, in which case they'll be met with more vines that they can't cross. Mistake. <laughs> um, but yeah, they'll be faced with vines that they can't cross. Um, and then they'll come across a ladder, so they'll have to climb this, and then they won't be able to get to the next ladder so they'll have to switch in which case they'll realise okay there's a ladder there and then switch back um, once they reach the top of this um, I wanted to sort of have a bit of backtracking so the player will naturally want to go left as this uh, ladder system will sort of push them out this way uh, however the they can't obviously get past the tree, so they'll sort of look back and go, hmm, is there anywhere else I can go? Um, and then when they switch, they'll find that there's a lower down platform, but this character can't jump that high. So what what will have to happen is they will have to jump and then switch at the top of their jump in order to land on this ledge and climb the steps. Um, this is the first instance where I brought a corruption element into the normal world. Um, this is just to sort of demonstrate that the corruption is spreading uh, due to the amount of times they're switching. So, um, yeah, they'll have to jump over these. Um, and then there's more spreading of the corruption. So they'll have to switch, in which case there's lower down vines. 
so if we can jump it, there we go. Um, in which case that's done. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening. Um, I had a lot of fun making this game. Um, I 